Hi everyone, welcome back to Vlogmas Day 3. Today I am diving straight into the heart of paint production, the core component of paint for both water-based paint and oil-based paint. These are the essential building blocks you need to understand if you are serious about mastering paint manufacturing. And stick around because I will also share advanced chemical and how they can take your paint production to the next level. By the way, if you are here for the Vlogmas 31 Days Challenge, remember I am picking 31 lucky winners to get the free access to my complete paint production course. Stay active by liking this video, commenting paint production 31 lucky winners and following all the rules. Let's get started. Paint production is all about understanding the chemistry behind it. Whether you're making water-based paint like emulsion or oil-based paint for a glossy finish, knowing your chemicals and their function is the key to creating high-quality product that stands out in the market. So let's break it all down. Water-based paints are eco-friendly and easy to clean. Here are their components. Water. The main solvent carriers that dissolve all the ingredients and evaporate after application. Acleric emulsion provides durability, adhesion, and UV resistance. So we have um, different types of acleric re um, um, resin, which are your binders, you understand? So we have acleric emulsion, and then we have PVA, which is your polyvinyl akita, and we have citerin acleric. So the acleric emulsion provides durability, adhesion, and UV resistance, while your um, polyvinyl akita is cost-effective and ideal for economic paint then why your synthetic acleric has water resistance and glossiness so titanium dioxide enhance opacity and brightness so under pigment we have titanium dioxide we have iron or um, iron oxide and we have organic um, pigment so under this pigment we have the the iron oxide which is your powder and then we have the liquid paste which is your liquid the, the water paste, you understand? So for the pigment, like I said, we have titanium dioxide, which enhance opacity and brightness. And then we have iron oxide, the earthly tones like red, yellow, and brown. And then we have organic pigments, which are the vibrant colors for premium paint. So this pigment, uh, we have them in different colors, like red, blue, brown, green, black. And we also have them in the um, paste, which are the liquid um, pigment. You understand? The only difference is that the the iron oxide are the powder pigment, while the, the paste are the liquid pigment. So, under your fillers, we have um, cajun carbonate, and then we have talac powder, and we have carolin. So, cajun carbonate adds volume and reduces production costs, while your um, talac powder improves smoothness and texture. Then your carolin enhances opacity and reduces settling of the paint. So now, in additives, we have the disparent agents, which are your sodium sulfates, which are your um, carbon PT, or your caustic soda. This chemical distrib um, distributes pigments and fillers. They help in grinding of this um, um, pigment and the fillers, which are your calcium. So on the additives, we also have deformer, you understand? And the function of deformer is it reduces air bubbles during mixture of the paint. Then on the additive as well, we have the thickness, you understand, which is your hydrosotylene cellulose, which um, which is are your nitroso as well. So this chemical adjusts veloc um, velocity for better application. Then under these same additives, we have your biocide. You understand, the biocide prevents um, microbial growth when the paint is stored, which are your formalin or your artesite. Then we have the wetting agent that improves the spread and adhesion of this paint. And this wetting, a, a wetting agent is um, simply your jenny pore. You understand? So now we have um, other advanced additives, which is your UV stabilizers. Your UV stabilizers 
um, protect against sun damage and fading. And then we have your silicone-based water repellent, which enhance water resistance. And then we have the freeze-throw stabilizers, which prevent damage from frozen paint. For those of us that stay in countries that it's very um, freezy and cold, especially during this time of the, the winter season. So we have chemicals that that you add to your paint that will make your paint um, not to be damaged by freezing. So now we move over to oil-based paint um, co um, co chemicals. So oil-based paints are known for their durability and, and rich finish. So let's break down their components. We have um, the the sovereignty, you understand? So on that sovereignty, we have the mineral spirits. These dissolve binders and adjust velocity. You understand? And then we have um to patin, which are the traditional sovereignty for thinning and um, cleaning. Remember in water-based um, um, paint, our sovereignty was water. So in oil-based paint, our sovereignty is either the mineral spirit or kerosene or fuel or which or the tupatine, you understand. So from their names, you'll be able to know that oil-based paint um, sovereignty is the kerosene or tupatine or mineral spirit, you understand. It helps to dissolve binders just like how water helps to dissolve the, um, the chemicals in the water-based paint um, um, production process. You understand? So we also have um, our binders. Under our binders, we have the acid resin, we have the lisa oil, and we have the epoxy resin. So the acid resin are durable and glossy. The most common binder for oil-based paint you understand. So the, the other um, binders as well is your lysyl oil. This provides a natural binder for a smooth finishing. Then we have the epoxy resin, which is used for industrial coating with um, expectational adduation and chemical resistance. You understand, just like how we have different binders for water-based paint, which are your um, PVA, um, Emotion, and your um, Polyver Akita. In oil-based paint, we have different binders as well, you understand? So the next um, chemicals are your pigments. Yes, for what the, for oil-based paint, we have different types of pigment. We have the titanium dioxide, we have the cobalt um, um, black, and we have the citerate iron oxide. So it is the same titanium oxide that you use in your water-based paint. Yes, it serves as your, um, um, it provides opacity and brightness Brightness also for oil-based paint. Then why the um, carbon black creates deep black tone and enhance UV resistance for your oil-based paint. Then we have the Citeri um, Iron Oxide. It has earthly tone, um, which um, um, improves the UV um, stabilizers. So, under this um, pigment for oil-based um, paint, we also have the, the liquid oil-based um, paste for different colors, you understand? And the functions of the pigment for oil-based paint, it adds glossiness to your oil-based paint production. That is why it's always advisable to always get each specific pigment for either water-based um, paint production and or oil-based paint production. Please have that in your mind that we have different types of pigment. We have the one for oil-based um, paint um, production that adds glossiness to this oil-based um, paint production. And it goes well with the oil-based paint production. Why the water-based paint pigment? Pigment simply means your color, you understand. So we have additives as well under the oil-based um and paint, which are your dryers, your anti skinner agent, and your flow modifiers and anti settling agent. So, your dryers, which are your cobalt napotinate, it speeds up the drying process. It makes the, 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 the oil based paint dry quickly. And why your anti skinner um, um, agent prevents the formulation of the skin when the paint is tall. At times, when you see oil based paint is tall, you see the, the you see something like um, on, on, on top of the, the, the iron of the paint. So your anti skin agent prevents the um, formation of skin instead of the paint. So we have the, um, the flow modifiers, like I said, which ensures a smooth application of this oil-based paint. And why your anti settling agent keeps pigment suspended in the mixture, 
It doesn't allow the, the, the pigment to settle. It, it makes sure all the chemicals blend together. We also have advanced additives in oil-based um, um, oil paint production, which are your coration inhibitors. These pro, um, protect metal surfaces from rusting. Yes. And then we have the nano pigment, which provides superior coverage and brilliantness in your oil-based paint production. And then we have the silicon resin, which increase weather resistance and durability. You understand? So um, all these um, chemicals will let you produce a well durable um, water-based paint production or oil-based um, paint um, production. You understand? So comparing water-based versus oil-based paint um, chemicals. So the solvent is, is water for your water-based paint. Why oil-based paint is your mineral spirit or your tipatine or kerosene. Why your binders for water-based paint is your acleric PVA and you, for water-based paint and your oil-based paint is your acolyte or lisa oil. Then the pigment for water-based paint, we have your titanium dioxide, your organic pigment, and your non-organic pigment, which is your liquid paste. Then for oil-based paint, we have your titanium dioxide and we have your carbon black and your on carbon black, which is your um, paste, the water oil-based um, um, pigment. Then for additives for water-based paint, we have deformers and biocide. Why for your um, oil-based paint additives, we have dryers, anti-skinning, and the antisetly agent. So in this process, you'll be able to differentiate these chemicals. We also have other chemicals, but just because I don't want to um, let this video to be too long, we have the um, we have the colicent um, um, agent, which is your texanol for your water-based paint. And we also have the DOP, which can be also used for your water-based paint production and your oil-based paint um, uh, production. So was this breakdown helpful? Hit the like button and let me know by commenting paint production 31 lucky winners below. Remember, we are in the Vlogmas 31 days challenge and I am picking one lucky winners daily to get free access to my complete paint production course. If you're ready, if you're ready, my student, you will get my upcoming 2025 advanced course for free if you win. So don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to join the challenge. Tomorrow, we'll go even deeper into how to choose the right paint type for your business goal. This is the foundation you need to start your paint production. So turn on the notification so you don't miss it. Let's keep learning and growing together. See you in the next video. Bye for now.